Thank you, Father. Hi, Esther. It's a blessing. Glory to God. Thank God for another day. God be the glory for everything he's doing. Thank you, Father. Hello, Mahalia. God bless you too, woman of God. <laughs> it's a blessing to have you all support. Hey, Andrea. Blessings, Mahalia. I am so excited in the midst of everything that's going on. Hey, Gloria. I appreciate y'all's support. Um, appreciate your financial support, everything y'all been doing. Y'all don't know how much that means to me. I really appreciate y'all. I want y'all to know that. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Whew. While we're waiting for a few more people to sign in, I want you to go to Psalms 103. That's where we're going to rest at uh, today. It's amazing when uh, I first started the church. Of course, I was married then. And um, I used to go. I worked at American Express. Hi, Mamie. That's not Mamie. That's Mahalia again. <laughs> hey, Mahalia. Hey, Mother Powell. I used to go to, um, I work at American Express. And my uh, husband used to, uh, he went to work, of course. He took care of the house and everything, made sure everything at the house was paid. So I started going to work so that I could pay everything in the ministry. And my faith in God, I knew God had called us. I was all excited. But I thought that I needed to help God do what he wanted done. So I, I would go to work every day, and every day I went to work, uh, I felt like, like I was crying on my way going. I felt like I was being pulled, and um, I didn't understand it. And God said to me, finally, they had to rush me to the emergency room. And they didn't find anything wrong. I kept going to work every day. About two weeks down the road, they had to rush me to the emergency room again. So I'm like, God, this is something is, something is not right. Um, around a month from then, they had to rush me to the emergency room a third time. I'm lying there. I'm asking God. What in the world is this? Why am I sick? And the Lord said, you've been disobedient. I did not tell you to go to work on a physical job to pay the bills of the ministry. He said, if I told you to step out on faith, I meant that. Then he said, haven't I supplied your needs when you were at the hotel? Haven't I supplied your needs when you was in this other place? He said, why can't you trust me now that you have a building to supply your needs? And I lay there on that gurney and I started crying and I, I, I repent. And, and all God said, I call you to noonday prayer, was what he kept telling me. I call you to noonday prayer. And if you would go and do noonday prayer, I will open up the doors and I will send the people in. I ended up having emergency surgery. After I went through all that, while I was recovering, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, go to the church every day and pray. I started going every day. People started coming. The ministry began to grow. People started coming to, to just on their lunch break. They would come and be in prayer and, and slip out to go back to their, their workplace. And then the ministry started to grow. And I started, my, my faith then got even built up stronger. It's something significant, why well, I'm saying this, about the noonday and prayer. And, and it's amazing 
that you, you think people are busy and they don't have time, but if you take the time and start noonday prayer, you'd be surprised, hi Carrie, at what God would do, how he will bless your ministry. Hallelujah. Hi, Bernadette. God wants to bless, and I keep hearing him say, there is some things in your ministry that you need to be doing. And maybe you need to have a prayer group at noonday, just praying for your church, interceding for your neighborhood, your community. Amen. It's just a, a blessing to know that prayer changes things. And even after this 40 days is over, I'm going to still come on at least once a day or however God will lead me and still give a word and give prayer because I feel like people need it. It has to happen, and I thank God for this season, this time. I'm a little bit full today. I um, understand my former pastor died last night, Pastor Bobby Hall, and I, I got the news like an hour ago, and um, it's really disturbing and shocking. Um, and I've been trying to pull myself together so that I could do this, and um, I've been a member of that church for nine years, and uh, they're some good people, sweet people, and I just pray for his wife and his children, and just buried his son like three or four months ago. So that's a blow to the Hall family, Greater Hall Temple Church of God in Christ. I want you all to keep them lifted up in prayer today. Amen. Amen. Now, Psalms 103, and I'm going to start at verse 5, uh, verse 1, but we're going to focus on verse 5. It says, Blessed the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy soul from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, bless him. Bless him. Our youth would be renewed like the, like the, uh, I'm sorry, like the eagles. Lord, have mercy. When you look at the Amplified, it says, Bless affectionately, gratefully, praise, O Lord. Thank you, Father. And all that is in my soul, in that my, that's deep within me, everything in me, on down on the inside of me, bless his holy name. And it says, um, going down to verse 5 that we're going to focus on, I want to give you the Amplified Virgin. It says, who satisfy to your mouth your necessity and desires at your personal age and your situation. He satisfy you at the age you are with good, with good, so that your youth, your youth is renewed. It's like the eagles. An eagle is strong. An eagle is mighty. An eagle overcome all kind of obstacles because an eagle so high above the in the atmosphere. And, and I often like ask people, do you want to be like the chickens that has to be on the ground eating from the dirt? Or do you want to be like the eagles that's so high, high above the earth? An eagle could sit up high and he looked down and he could see everything. And God said he'll renew your youth like the eagle. An eagle stands strong. An eagle overcome. An eagle always soaring. God wants you to come up to that point. Stop thinking uh, like the chickens and, and, and being on the ground. Think above. Let your thinking be high. And today what I want to talk about is the power for a new beginning. The po a power the power for a new beginning and we come against the spirit of stagnation a lot of you had been stagnated 
and, and going through your drought experience and dealing with a pandemic, you've been feeling a little stagnated, out of place. When you desire a new thing, uh, things should begin. When you desire a new thing to begin in your life, you have to make some different changes. You have to do some different things because you are desiring something different. So remember, I told you when you want something different, you can't act the way you have been acting. You have to change some things around you. The end of your sinful, hopeless, helpless, weary, and frustrated life is a new beginning, a vibrant an existing life in Christ. When the fire began to burn in you, it bring about uh, uh, excitement. It bring about your joy. It, it, it stirs you up and get you get the fire going in you again. Get that spark going. And in and, and Isaiah 43 and 19, and I cannot leave. This is my favorite scripture. Uh, and you all going to know this by the time you're done with all this. It's behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. And he said, do you not know it? Do you, have you not realized that just the few days that you've been on, that God have renewed something in you? God have renewed your strength. God has given you more hope. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'll even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So listen to these uh, things. There was a woman. This is a story I want to tell you right now. There was a woman, one woman called May. She sobbed uncontrollably after 35 years of marriage. Her husband died. All her plans for retirement, um, it was of no use anymore. Men, two men, are not supposed to cry. They say men are not supposed to cry. Um, and I don't know why. They're supposed to be strong. Yet Andrew covered his face with his hands and wept bitterly because his business had collapsed. All his handiwork and all his dreams were shattered. Now the first story was the woman whose husband died. All her retirement, all her plans was of no use anymore. The second thing is men, they're telling men they, don't, they shouldn't cry. So when he saw his business collapse and everything going wrong, all he could do was cry. His business, everything was shattered. His dreams were shattered. And a lot of people are going through that now with the pandemic. They weren't able to open. They weren't able to do business. They, they just sitting down waiting on God to come and do something. And they don't know what it is that God is going to do. They don't trust God like they should to bring them through. And the third story is Anne. She suddenly found herself jobless. Where will she start from? She don't know where to start from. There are questions. And the fourth story, Paul cried out in unbelief when his finances called off their, his fiance, I'm sorry, when his fiance called off their engagement because she had met someone else. I'm going somewhere with this. Hang with me for a moment. Your own case may be like one of these cases, but whatever the situation is, the death of a loved one, the collapse of a business, the loss of a job, a broken engagement, divorce, you got to have faith in God. No matter what the situation is, no matter what life throw at you, you got to come back to that faith in God. Our God is faithful and he will not deny himself. 2 Timothy 2 and 12, he's faithful. He will not deny himself. As long as there is life, there is hope. I tell people, keep breathing. No matter what's going on around you, don't commit suicide. Don't, don't try to take your life. As long as you're breathing, there is hope. We do not need to be confused or afraid of the future. God is always there for us. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Hebrew 13 and 5. He said, I will not leave you. I'm right here with you. Now, our hope and our confidence we have in him cannot be vain, cannot be in vain. 
these prayers will bring uh, you into a new beginning. God promised Isaiah 43 and 19. He said, Behold, I will. He not say, I'm going to think about it. He said, Behold, I will. I will do a new thing in your life. It shall. That means it's got to happen. It shall spring forth. forth. It's going to come forth. It's going to gush forth like a gusher. It's coming forth. It's going to break through every barrier, break through every stronghold, break through every wall, break through every negative thing. It's going to burst forth in your life. And in the midst of it, God is going to catapult you. Woo! Catapult you much further than where you thought you would go. He said, because when I catapult you, it's like having a bow and an arrow. And when you pull back to shoot, that arrow is going to shoot far. How strong is your faith? How strong is your faith? Is your faith strong enough to pull that arrow all the way back so it can shoot far? Or is your faith strong enough to just pull it a little bit and let it fall to the ground? How, how, how big is your faith today? God want to plant good things in your life. I'm doing these prayer points today. I can't hear you, but I want you to repeat after me. And then we're going to pray. Say, oh Lord, plant good things in my life. Oh Lord, uproot evil things from my life. Uh-huh. I cancel every unconscious negative agreement in Jesus' name. I cancel every unconscious negative agreement in Jesus' name. We make agreement and we say little things out of our mouth and we don't know God is listening. God is watching. The enemy is listening and watching too because he take that negative thing and he run with it. And you've spoken negativity on some things that you really want to happen. But you can't, once the word leave your mouth, you can't put it back. So we cancel the assignment now. Every negative agreement. Say, Lord, make me a battle axe for you. Come on, say it. Lord, make me your battle axe. Now, let every spiritual weak in my life receive termination now let every every spiritual weakness in my life receive termination now in the name of Jesus these prep points going to get you where you need to be now say this with me let every financial failure in my life receive termination now in the name of Jesus, every financial failure in my life, I command you to receive termination. Now, I want you to say this with authority. I want you to say it like you mean it. Say it. Let every sickness in my life receive termination now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to go. You got to go. Let every architect of problem receive termination. Now, in the name of Jesus, the devil have orchestrated uh, all kinds of stuff in the spirit. So you're going to tear down that, that, that architect, the plan that he have to destroy your life. We command it to fall to the ground and be terminated now in the name of Jesus. Come on, say this with me. I paralyze all spiritual wolves working against my life in the name of Jesus. I paralyze them now. They cannot work against my life any longer. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Let that which hinders me from greatness begin to come forth now. Let that, I'm sorry, let that which hinder me from greatness give way now. Let it give way. It was hindering you from greatness. Let it be destroyed now. The blood of Jesus, the enemy will not trip my tongue today. Let every, everything, every hindering spirit, that's hindering you from greatness. So Lord, let it give way now. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let every imprisoned and buried part of pedestals begin to come forth. Every, every imprisoned and buried potential, let it come forth now. All your potential, all your hopes, all your dreams, your visions, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that it would come forth now. Nothing hindering, nothing hindering your blessings anymore. Nothing hindering your potential anymore. Nothing hindering your dreams, your visions anymore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Every unfriendly helpers, I command you in the name of Jesus to depart from me. Every unfriendly helpers, those that gather around you and say in your face they are with you and they want to help you, but behind your back they're tearing you down. Let them be gone in the name of Jesus. God, I praise you. God, I glorify your name. God, I honor you today. I thank you, God. Let every negative, negative transaction currently affecting my life negatively be canceled. Every negative transaction, hallelujah, let every negative transaction that's currently affecting your life, thank you, Lord, let it be canceled now. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your new beginning, your new season. This is the power for a new beginning. We'll come forth. The enemy will not rob you. He will not steal, steal anything else from you. Father, we block the enemy now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood. Father, I command all dark birth against my life in the secret to be exposed and nullified. Every dark work, every dark work, work, say it with me, every dark work, hallelujah, every dark work that's done against my life in secret, expose it now. God is going to expose your enemies to you. Can you handle what he show you? Can you handle what you're about to find out. Can you handle it? Because he said, I'm going to expose it to you. I'm going to let you know where the rough places are, where the hot spots are. I'm going to let you know what, what's being done behind the scene. God is going to open up some things. He's going to pull the cover off this season. He's not going to have you held back any longer. He's not, not going to let people rejoice over your, your, your hurt and rejoice over what you're going through. He's not allowing people to just do things to you in this season, say anything to you and about you in this season. God said, I'm shutting the mouth of the lion that's been rowing against you this season. He said, this season, I'm going to shut down some folks. I'm going to shut down some things because people have been using the name of the Lord to harm people, to hurt people, to do damage. God said, not so in this season. He's bringing you into a new beginning. He's giving you different words to pray, giving you different strategies. He's giving you divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine understanding. He's clarifying some stuff for you in this season. I tell you, you're too hot for the enemy to handle this season. What the enemy thought he could touch in your life last season, he can't touch it this season. The anointing on your life is too hot for the enemy to handle. And the enemy is mad because what, where he had a foothold, he don't have that foothold anymore. That's done and gone. It's nullified. He don't have no authority over you. He have no authority over your body. He have no authority over your health. God is your authority. God made you. God created you. And God wants you healed. He wants your body healed. How could you witness? How could you go forth and tell of the goodness of the Lord if you're sick? If you're downtrodden, how in the world you could go and witness about the goodness of the Lord when your health is all jacked up? God said, I'm healing you. I'm healing your body so you could go forth. And, and speak forth my word. Hallelujah, God, I thank you. 
Hallelujah. I want you to say this with me. Say, I loose myself from any evil spirit. There are, you might say, well, I, I don't know anything about evil spirit. You don't know what's been happening in the spirit realm. You don't know what has been done and said. So I want you to say, I release myself from any evil spirit now. I release myself now. I plead the blood now in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, if my life is on the wrong course, correct it now. Correct it now. If my life is on the wrong course, I ask you to correct it now. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I praise you. Hallelujah. I want you to say, I command my destiny to change to the best in Jesus' name. Whatever it is you were destined to do, I command it to come forth. Whatever has been in the way blocking it, let it let everything shift so that you you can come into your destiny now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. So let my hand become a sword of fire to cut demonic trees. In the name of Jesus, I want you to take your hand and begin to cut demonic trees. Now listen, in the spirit realm, as an act of faith, when you hear me clap my hand, something is happening, something is breaking, something is bursting forth. I want you to take your hand. If you got to clap your hand, if you got to cut this, use it as a sword and decree and declare that I'm cut loose from all, from all ungodly things, all that evil. Hallelujah. I cut myself loose now. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I plead the blood of Jesus over my atmosphere. I plead the blood of Jesus over my home, over my family, wherever my children are. I plead the blood over them right now. I cover them in the blood. Where no hurt, harm, or danger would befall them. I cover them in the blood. Father, I thank you for a new beginning. I thank you for a fresh start. I thank you, Father, for how you, 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 you've opened up the eyes. You've opened up the ears, Father. I thank you for blasting open heavens just for us. I thank you for the portal that you open over us, Father, where you allow your angels to come down. They come down and take our request, and then they ascend back to you and bring our request back to you. I thank you, Father. I thank you for the angels that you have stationed in position to see about us now. I thank you for the legions of angels that's attached to us. I thank you, Father, because I'm giving them assignments. No more lazy angels. Remember, I told you, you have a legion of angels that you were born with, and some of them were not active because you didn't give them an assignment. This is your, re your, 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 your season. Give those angels assignment every day. You said I did it the other day when you said it every day. Give your angels an assignment. Tell them what you need done before you get up out of your bed while you're driving to work, whatever you're doing. Throughout the day send your angels to go before you. Hallelujah, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I praise you. I thank you for the open door. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I see in the spirit right now, there is, I see a church. And, I, and there, there is, uh, it's a witch. That when there is no service, they're walking by and they're saying things and they're cursing the ministry and they're saying some things against your church. Now, I, I don't know who, uh, but I need y'all to anoint your church grounds, anoint your church, just like you anointed your house. But I want you to get the oil and I want you to anoint the hole all around your building. Get you some water 
and put the anointed oil in the water. And I want you to take that hand that always on fire, it's my right hand. And I want you to put it in that water. And I want you to pray, pray. And you use that as a point of contact. And I want you to take that water and sprinkle all around your church. Sprinkle it all around your church, all around your dwelling place. What are you doing? You're consecrating the place and you cleansing it. Whatever it is that they thought that they were doing, when they look, it ain't going to be no sudden destruction on you. It's going to be somebody and somebody you know going to get deathly ill. Uh-huh. Because you're sending everything back to the sender. We, you plead in the blood of Jesus, and it's a shield you're putting up, and whatever they throw at you, going to bounce right back on them. I plead the blood of Jesus over your church. I plead the blood over your pastor. I plead the blood now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I plead the blood now over every member of your congregation. I plead the blood now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Whatever it is, whatever that curse was that the witches might have put on, that is null and void. God, I thank you. God, I glorify you today. God, I honor you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, I glorify your name, God. It's all about you, God. It's all about you. I give you thanks, God. I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I send forth the angels to go now. I send forth the angels now. I, 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 I call on Michael, the archangel. I call on Gabriel. I ask them to go fight war in the heavenlies. Do you not know that there is an angel, an archangel that's assigned to to your church there's an archangel that's a sign to your ministry glory to God glory to God glory to God glory to God glory hallelujah God I glorify you thank you father thank you father thank you father Give God thanks today. Hallelujah. I had to stop right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When you go and anoint your church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anoint your church. God's going to speak to you and he's going to give you some specific instructions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. A cleansing have to take place. Like you cleanse your home. You anoint your home. That cleansing have to take place in your ministry as well. This is a rough season. A lot of churches a rough season but guess what God is on our side and we're making it we're gonna make it we're coming through this bless the children of Israel was in bondage but when they came out they came out blessed the people in Egypt were so happy to get rid of them because they felt that they had a curse on them because they was withholding God's elect, God's people. When they came out from Egypt, they had to go. They went and knocked on doors and borrowed gold and silver and the best of everything. When they left Egypt, they left Egypt with stuff. They didn't leave empty-handed. They left with gold and silver and precious jewels. They gave themselves, take it, just get out of our country. Just take it and go. There are people who's going to come and bless you. And you're going to wonder, well, where is this coming from? God going to cause them to come back and bless you. Some of them, because of what they've done to you, they got to come back and bless you. <laughs> Whew. I'm going to pray about our prayer request. Because I feel like I could go on and on and I can't. I'm not going to do that. Bless the Lord. 
I pray that I've said something today to encourage you, to help you, give you a little bit more wit and wisdom in life. Father, I praise you now. I've had a few more prayer requests that came. Amen. I have my number on the screen. If you could text me, text me uh, your request. Send it to me. Hallelujah. God, I glorify you today. And I lift up the prayer request to you. Every name, every family. God, I lift them up. I lift up the whole family. I lift up going through bereavement. I lift them up before you. I lift up every person in the list that need to be healed, delivered, set free. A child, or children that need to come back home. I lift them up before you, God. And I seek the Holy Ghost to go forth now and reel them back in. Bring them back to you, Father. Bring them back to their foundation, back to their roots. Bring them back. Bring them back to their mothers, back to their fathers. Bring them home, Father. Heal, set free, deliver, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you, Lord. I pray over you. I pray over your shepherd. Now I lift up every pastor that have anyone that's represented on the line today. I lift your pastor up now. I plead the blood of Jesus over your shepherd. And I ask God to heal them. Heal them, God. Strengthen them, Father. Keep them, Father. I thank you now. Give them a fresh word. Anoint them even the more, Father. I thank you, Father. I give you praise. I give you glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Dear God, I keep these in the Bible. Amen. I love you guys. I appreciate you so much. Until we meet at 3 o'clock, remember this. Love is not love until you give it away. You can tell somebody all day I love you. Give away some love. Amen. I know we can't be hugging and all that stuff right now. <laughs> hey. Put your arms around yourself and do this. That's my hug to you. That's my love to you. Amen. To God be the glory. Christ, prayer and deliverance and outreach ministry. Pastor Benjamin Jones, we lift you up before the Lord today. We lift you up. We pray the strength of the Lord, the power of the Lord the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn in him like it's never done before. Let there be a fresh anointing, a freshness about him. Father, I thank you. When he might feel all burned out, give him that fresh wind. Hallelujah. God, I praise you for him now. I thank you. God, I love you. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. God bless you. Have an awesome day.